Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So in today's video, I'll be discussing all the deets about traveling to Cancun, everything you need to know before going there if you're planning a trip. I'll also be discussing everything about my vacation, where I booked, um, the excursions I did, what room I had, the situation with COVID, how everything was in the airport, some concerns that I know that people have when traveling to Cancun, Everything you could think of, I will be discussing in this video. So if you're interested in finding out all the information that you need for your next vacation to Cancun, make sure to keep on watching. So the first thing I'm gonna be starting with is safety because when traveling to any country that you've never been to, it's really important to feel safe in order to have a good experience. I didn't feel in danger at all the entire time I was there. We were there for seven days and Cancun is a very safe place in my opinion. I remember asking the person that drove us to the hotel if we should be worried about safety and stuff like that and he said, when it comes to Cancun, I will be safe because it's a touristy area. But at the end of the day, you always have to like take your own precautions and like be careful. What I recommend is basically do everything through the hotel or have everything booked when you before you go over there. The first thing you have to do when planning a, a vacation is basically decide your budget. Figure out how much you're willing to spend, how much you want to spend on your vacation. And then from there, you can look around for hotels and different websites, see what website offers you a better deal. What I learned when looking and researching for um, a hotel is that Cancun basically has a hotel for anybody and for any budget. You can go to Cancun and not spend a lot of money. It's, it's literally up to you how much money you're going to be spending there. You have to be able to put a stop to yourself because it is very tempting to just do everything. Something else that's really important when it comes to planning before going to Cancun, it is really important to find out the conversion rate for Mexican peso, $2. The biggest mistake I made the first time I traveled to Mexico was basically use dollars the entire time I was there or like use my card. That was the dumbest mistake because those card fees hit when I got back home. So don't do that because you'll literally spend so much money on fees. The best thing to do is to go to the bank and tell them that you wanna order Mexican pesos. Um, do that like a week or two weeks in advance. I went to the bank like two days or one day prior to my flight and I was like, oh, I want Mexican pesos. And they were like, girl, we have to order it. And I'm like, what? You just don't have them back there somewhere? Um, so yeah, so they have to order it. So I would recommend going two weeks or one week in advance. Also make sure to call the bank or let them know you'll be traveling so that they don't block any transactions because you're in another country. I would recommend not booking through the, the hotel directly. I find that those prices are extremely high compared to the ones that you can get on websites like Cheap Caribbean or Expedia because on those websites you can do bundle deals and get your flights and your hotel stay. Planning is the most crucial part. Everything you do prior to going over there will really decide how your trip goes. That's why I like to plan all the things I'm gonna do day by day so that I know when I'm there that I have something to do and I'm not wasting time trying to figure it out over there. So what I did is that I wrote down all the excursions I wanted to do and then I, I looked up pricing in different websites and then I chose the one that was the best for me and then I decided what days I wanted to do it for. I made sure to leave some days that we were just at the hotel chilling because I wanted to have time to go on excursions and explore and do things, do activities, but still enjoy the hotel. We did so much research before picking a hotel. Like Danny and I were literally like searching and searching and searching for months. I was on YouTube, I was on Google, I was searching everywhere. I was on Instagram looking at hotels. The two websites I focused on were um, Expedia and Cheap Caribbean. So the first time I went to Mexico, the first time I went to Cancun, um, I booked through Expedia. At the time, Expedia was the most affordable option. And this time I felt, well, not that I felt, it was cheaper than Expedia. And the, the pricing would fluctuate like as the months progressed, like, it was like up, down, up, down, up, down. So yeah, we were just looking at Cheap Caribbean and Expedia. Expedia turned out to be a little bit more expensive than um, Cheap Caribbean. So that is why we booked through Cheap Caribbean. We booked the flights and the hotel, a bundle. You save a lot of money when you do that. And for the both of us, it was like 2000, let me look it up. Okay, so for the both of us, it was around 2,700. That was like 1,350 per person. We did book our transportation to and from the hotel through our Cheap Caribbean bundle. 
that was $95 for the both of us. When we got out the airport, we just went outside, found the people from the company that we booked, and then they just literally took us. It was great service, they were super nice. Um, they were very helpful. I wanted to answer this question because somebody asked me on my Instagram if there are payment plans for the hotels. Yeah, I think it's Expedia, they do have like a payment plan. So initially we booked from the 1st of September to the 6th and we had a aqua something room. It was like ocean view, but it was smaller than the, the one we had. The one we had was a Fuego suite. Um, the room number was 8023 for those of you asking. We decided to upgrade our room once we got there because they gave us a deal and the room was so much better. It was amazing. I fell in love right away. Um, it was way more expensive and honestly we were so lucky to get that room at the price that we did. Some of the perks of the Fuego Suite that we had were sparkling wine and chocolate in the room upon arrival. We had free access to the Aqua Club. We had a free cabana every single day and a foot massage. We didn't get the foot massage because COVID, they're not really doing, well, at the time they weren't doing it. And they also offered a 15% discount on the lobster grill um, restaurant. I don't know how to pronounce the name, but I'll put it somewhere on the screen. Um, but at the time the restaurant was not open. There were a lot of restaurants that were not open at the time of our um, trip, but towards the end of our trip, most of the restaurants started opening up since their capacity was like 30% when we got there and then during the weekend it like went up something i noticed when i went the first time is that things do not look the way that, that they look online it might look worse but it might look better keep in mind that like i was searching online for like videos about the fuego suites and the videos that i saw online are very old from like 2017 and the hotel actually went through renovations so the rooms don't look anything like that if the rooms that you're looking at online look older that's not what they look like anymore so that's why i recommend looking at youtubers that get paid to go to those places like travel youtubers um one of the youtubers we were looking at was angie what's her name let me look it up trips with angie she basically gets paid to go to hotels and walk around them do like a walkthrough tour and talk about the hotel um so we looked at those type of videos but we also focused on looking at like vlogs of real people not saying that she's not real but like you know regular people just going to visit the hotels you just get a different perspective when there's different people recording it live aqua all-inclusive resort it's a beautiful 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 hotel something that stood out to me about this hotel was the cleanliness clean space is always important especially like during a time like this i just can't explain how spotless the hotel was like it was just super clean you always saw someone cleaning like it smelled amazing in the lobby they had music it was just like such a calm vibe it's an adult only um hotel it has seven pools it has an infinity pool in the middle and then it has other pools they have around 10 restaurants a variety of food wasn't that great because most of the restaurants were closed oh my god so something else that we were able to experience that was so beautiful in this hotel was putting out sea turtles into the ocean they keep a space in the hotel by the beach where like they have the eggs once they hatch they put them into the sea and like if you're there you could help them to me that was like one of the most beautiful things i've ever experienced i felt like a god mommy to a turtle and it was just such a great experience so if you would like to experience that they do have sea turtle eggs at the hotel during that time of the year the beach of the hotel was absolutely beautiful it was super clean so when it comes to the excursions the first time i went to cancun I booked most of the stuff that I did over there, which was a mistake because things are way more expensive when you book them over there. So don't do that. Instead of doing that for this time, I decided to go on, on Expedia and check the things to do section that they have. And then you just put your location and they tell you things that you can do. I'm gonna put some of the excursions and tours that they have on Expedia on the screen so that you guys can see and get an idea of what they offer. So then after looking through those tours, seeing the pricing, seeing what they offer. So after we figured out what we wanted, we just booked them on um, Expedia. And then they sent us an email with all the information and stuff like that it was very simple one of the things i like about booking with expedia is that they have a rewards program um you sign up you make an account and then you basically gain points and you get discounts you get um different like perks to being a member or most of the excursions that we booked had the um transportation included that's something that i really 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 wanted to me that was really important because i wanted to feel safe and know that those people were taking me to and from the hotel 
For the excursion transportation, you were traveling with a group of people. So you basically went to the excursion with that group of people and then you came back with that group of people. At all times, we were wearing our masks. They had hand sanitizer. They... It wasn't much social distancing in the bus, obviously, because it was a smaller bus, but we did all have our masks on. The only thing that we did that didn't include transportation, and it was because it was something that we left to do over there, like we left to plan it over there, and it was Coco Bongo because we weren't sure if it was opened or not at the time that we went. We just booked Coco Bongo at the pool area of the hotel. Somebody just came up to, to us asking us if we wanted to go over there and just offering different pricing. And they let us know that transportation wasn't available, but that we could go to the front desk in the hotel and ask them to call us a taxi. And then to come back, literally, it's full of taxi cab drivers outside. So we just walked up to somebody and that's it and honestly i did not feel in danger at all like the entire time i was there there wasn't one time that i felt like i wasn't safe so the excursion slash activities that my boyfriend and i picked to do um during our stay were parasailing coco bongo explore park and a catamaran to Isla Mujer. So parasailing we basically just found somebody at the beach that's one thing that you're gonna find a bunch of people offering you things to do so if you forget to book something or once you're there you think about something else that you would like to do you could just do it there i just realized i said that the only thing i booked um over there was coco bongo but it wasn't because i booked parasailing over there as well I, the only reason why i did that was because i wanted to make i wanted to do parasailing in the hotel like I didn't want to take a bus to go parasail. In most of the excursions I saw on Expedia when it came to parasailing, you had to like go somewhere else. And a lot of them didn't offer um, transportation. So I was just like, I'm pretty sure they have somebody at the hotel beach that does parasailing. That's basically how it happened. We were just at the beach and somebody approached us. It was $130 for the both of us, so 65 per person. And they just had to sign, you know, some documents saying that you're responsible, blah, blah, blah. They swiped your card right then and there. For that, we used the card and for a few other things. We were very picky with what we were using our card for. So we had um, money, cash, and dollars, and pesos. I don't remember how much we changed, was it? I'm about to call my boyfriend and ask him. Why isn't he picking up? I was calling you to ask if you remember um, how much how much money we changed when we got to Mexico, to the airport. How much what did we change? Yeah. I believe it was 600. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Why are you using this photo right now? Because I feel like you. Okay, badass. It's because I, I, I'm giving Powerpuff Girls. So yeah, I wanted to do something like, give, you know? Give a comment, cards on that. Yeah, D don't you see? Alrighty, talk to you later. Alright, my love. Alligator. Back to you guys. We changed $600 into Mexican pesos, which is $12,074 pesos, not dollars, pesos. Right. Another thing that we did when it comes to excursions was going to Isla Mujeres. Initially, we paid $81 when we booked here at home through Expedia. And that was actually a really good deal because I remember the first time I went, it wasn't that cheap. However, the trip that we booked only included a boat ride and then it had, you know, like drinks on the boat. They stopped at Isla Mujeres. You could explore for like an hour or an hour and a half. And then you can get your own food in Isla Mujeres, pay for your own food. And then you get back on the boat and just go back to Cancun. So when we got there, we spoke to somebody and they basically offered us a VIP boat. And that's what happens a lot. They talk you into spending more money, but it was great. We had a great time. It was definitely worth it. Um, but keep that in mind. They will definitely try to like switch your plans, make you spend more money. Cause at the end of the day, they're working. They're trying to make their bag, you know? They trying to make the bag, they trying to get the bag. We basically ended up paying 50 more dollars per person to go on a VIP boat, which um, was fewer people. It included a stop to eat. From there, they took us to another place in Isla Mujeres where we were able to explore the island and then just do what we wanted to do alone for some time. Danny and I decided to rent some golf carts. We ended up paying like $40 for one, for the gas one. You have to provide them with a license, but to be honest, you can give them an ID and they'll literally give you one, even if you don't have a license, so T. After we were able to explore the island, we got back on the boat. We stopped in the middle of the ocean to swim, to just chill. 
And then after that, we just went back to Cancun. I can definitely speak about both experiences, both the VIP one and the regular one, because the first time I went to Cancun, I did the regular one and it was a great time as well. So whether you want to do the cheaper one or the other one, they're both great. Then another thing we did was visit Explore Park by Ex Excaret. Explore excursion was $320. Um, for the both of us, but with a coupon that I got from Wikibuy, it was um, $40 off. So when you're booking your vacation, make sure that you use a computer and you use Wikibuy because I promise you Wikibuy will save you money. You want to save your coins to go on vacation again. Explore basically offered um, zip lining. They have seven zip lines. I think if I'm not mistaken, they're the highest zip lines in Mexico. They also had little like cars that you could um, drive. They, they called them amphibios, amphibians. Driving through the little jungle that they have. They have a bunch of animals, lizards and meerkats and stuff like that that just popped up. So be careful if you go to Explore Park that you don't hit one of the animals. To me, that was kind of dangerous for them. The place was very beautiful. They had a restaurant which sucks we try to eat that food and it was disgusting like i personally did not like that food at all at explore they also have some like hammock zip line thing you're basically hanging on a hammock on a zip line and then you land into the river okay so when you get to explore they're gonna offer to sell you picture packages so they have cameras everywhere that you could just take pictures while doing the activities and they also offer like a, a 360 service It's basically like when you're doing the zip linings they have a you have like a different helmet it takes like a video of you like a 3d circle video initially we were just gonna get the pictures which i do recommend the pictures are beautiful i'm gonna insert some of the pictures that we took on there they literally take like so many pictures of you then danny actually was like oh no let's just get the the 360 one so that you can use the video that you get from ziplining on your vlog and so we did that it turns out the video is cute or whatever but the video is like it's supposed to look like a sphere and then you could just see like everything around you and you like ziplining but you can only see that with a specific like program so you can't save it in that shape. So it basically looks flat. I would not recommend to get that. It's not worth it. And it's way more expensive. I can't, I don't remember how much it was, but I'm pretty sure it was like $70. Another activity that we did while being at Explore was the water walk. You go into a cave. It's very dark in there. The water is really blue. There are bats in there. You have to walk so much. It's super fun and super beautiful but it's a lot of walking and you basically exit at some point of the water walk and you walk towards like slides that they have um if you guys want to see like what everything i'm explaining here is like go check out my vlog after you watch this video because this video has a lot of good information that you need if you want to travel to cancun make sure that you're wearing something that like won't have like a nip slip or like your booty is not gonna be out. Cause I was wearing a bathing suit and I was doing zip lining with a bathing suit. Obviously I had my cover up on, but it was very uncomfortable and I felt like I was being like exposed the entire time. Wanna be comfortable, wear biker shorts, water shoes and, or Crocs, I wore Crocs and I was fine. So finally the last activity we did outside the hotel was Coco Bongo. I think we paid 35 per person. Coco Bongo has at least the one that we bought it offers like a point system. They basically give you a certain amount of points and then the drinks over there and the snacks cost like an amount of points. And then they take, they subtract that from your balance of points. And then once you run out of points, then you basically just have to buy yourself. When it comes to the other bars in the Coco Bongo area, everything else was closed. The only thing that was open when I went was Coco Bongo. But I know that right now it is open. I would still recommend for you to like check online to see if you find any like updates because since everything is going back and like cases are increasing again, they might have closed it again. We took a taxi to and from Coco Bongo. I... I think the taxi to come back from Coco Bongo was more expensive. I think it was around 350 pesos, which is like $17, which is a lot, but we were safe and that's what's important. Um, but going there, I think it was 200 pesos, if I'm not mistaken. When it comes to health concerns, I know that's something that's in our minds right now when it comes to traveling. The hotel we stayed at had limited capacity, 
when it comes to traveling in the airport they basically just took our temperature and everything was regular other than that when we were on the plane they didn't ask for a test you didn't have to get tested i did get tested though before and after um, my trip on the airplane they asked us to fill out like a little questionnaire to make sure that we hadn't been exposed to COVID. another thing that i do hear a lot when it comes to um Cancun or like even other places to travel is like water concerns being concerned that the water is not safe to like drink or to even shower with for me personally the hotel water like I didn't have a problem with it it didn't make me break out we were drinking bottled water we never drank like tap water so that's what I would recommend and to brush your teeth and stuff like that you shouldn't be concerned I don't know what experiences other people have had maybe like your your stomach's more sensitive for me and my boyfriend we didn't experience any sickness at all when it comes to the water something that we did experience though was sun sickness like I felt drained sleepy I was hot like it literally felt like I had a fever I was hot, I was kind of like dizzy the entire time. Like I just felt like I had no energy. That's something that you should really keep in mind. Maybe like try to use like a hat or something. I don't know if it's because I suffer from migraines that for me, like it caused me so many symptoms. Sunscreen is so important. Something that I learned when going um, snorkeling is that some of the sunscreens that we might take on vacation can be harmful to a coral reef. So it's really important to research for um, and buy a sunscreen that is actually um, coral reef friendly so that we're not hurting the environment wherever we're visiting. Let's talk about weather concerns. That's something that me personally, that was number one on my mind. We went during September, which is during the, the hurricane season. So hurricane season starts in August and, and goes through um, November. We looked at the weather for our stay and it literally said it was gonna storm our entire trip. The first time I went to Mexico, I went in March. And during that time of the year, um, it was very sunny, barely any clouds. If it was cloudy, it was just like a little bit, like sun with clouds and it didn't rain. It was chilly though, it was very chilly at night. However, this time of the year during September, it was super hot throughout the day, the nighttime, like it was just hot. It actually didn't end up storming the entire time. Like literally, if you're concerned about rain in Cancun, I would say don't, just go live your life hope for the best i swear to you it rained for 15 minutes max like it rained for 15 minutes max and that's it there were clouds but it was still sunny like the weather was beautiful regardless and the rain was a vibe and i don't even like the rain the rain was a vibe we were at the pool like it was just beautiful i enjoyed the rain it's such a beautiful place that even the rain is beautiful so this is the end of the video. I hope that this information was helpful for any of you planning a trip to Cancun or anybody looking forward to doing so in the future. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys in my next one.